So I hope my presentation will show to you now. Uh, greetings from Stockholm. I'm, I'm here in a hotel now, so let's hope that the hotel will and will, will function <laughs> as it should be. Uh, yes, as I said, I'm, I'm mainly affiliated with uh, Technical Research Center of Finland, VTT, uh, where I'm a senior researcher, but I'm also uh, affiliated with, with Statistics Finland. And what I'm going to uh, present to you is just of, uh, emerge from an kind of internal curiosity about these, these measures, as I, I have an access to a number of sources, data sources where, uh, where, where uh, innovation is, is uh, and, and, and the US government. Uh, uh, the, 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 very cool. Sorry, uh, uh, I, I do have sorry Nika uh, the um could you stop just one moment that your connection restores because we we cannot hear you well oh okay Maybe now it's I... okay now it works okay good but we we lost the last uh, 30 seconds okay uh so the data i have compared here uh, are the uh data from national r d survey statistics finland conduct in finland uh, the uh, community innovation surveys that takes place every every second year. Then I uh, will compare the results of those two data sources uh, to measures that we get from financial. Uh, we have so-called employer employee data source. Uh, where there is information about uh, uh, persons, companies, employee, that is uh, how much they do pay salaries, uh, what kind of educational background they have, um, what kind of job title do they have, etc. Et so I, I have used that data to kind of um, conduct um, an R&D person requiring, for example, that in order to person to, to belong R&D um, capital, he or she must have this kind of educational background and this kind of a job title. Bear those measures, uh, the ones that companies state on, on the uh, national r and and community innovation so and of course then we have also uh, asked on those uh, innovation surveys so so this this is the data uh, i'm i have been working with and and then we'll compare uh, how how they view each data and, and with respect to reliability, there are at least this kind, four kinds of uh, reliability measures. I guess most of you are, are familiar with, with uh, Kronbach's alpha. That simply says that, okay, if we intend to measure some uh, construct, for example, three or four questions on, on a survey, uh, do, ans do the answers on those survey questions build the same const construct and uh, then that relates then to this in internal consistency reliability uh, the, the final item uh, on national r d surveys uh, the respondent uh, has an opportunity to give his or her name to the survey which then Allow, allowed me to, to compare that, uh, how do these responses change if the respondent 
changes between the years. So that gives an uh, opportunity to estimate this inter uh, rater um, reliability. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, uh, national R&D survey and the community innovation survey, so the, that hinders this uh, test, uh, retest, and inter-method reliability measurement. Uh, the, the kind of idea at, at uh, Statistics Finland is that uh, they, they want to reduce the burden uh, companies have to, to answer these surveys, and that's why there, there is very, very little overlap. But let's go on, go on to, to these uh, findings. Uh, so this question of uh, whether the company uh, uh, conducts research and development, uh, or whether it has commissioned uh, R&D from a from a third party that is uh, asked on both of these uh, innovation surveys. And here you can see how the uh, response has changed uh, from one year to another one. If the uh, respondent has, has uh, remained the same. Yes, sorry, this is now uh, R&D survey, the national one, because, because here we have the, the knowledge about the respondent. Uh, so, for example, in this this uh, middle case, in the uh, in the blue column, there the respondent has has remained the same, uh, whereas on this green column, the respondent has changed, and and you can see that the, there is a slight drop. And on the purple one, we don't know the the respondent uh, didn't uh, give his or her name, although I must say that typically. Uh, the the answers between or or the statistics between the blue and purple uh, columns are very close to each other. So I would assume that they they has they have remained the same. Of course, there can be a real change uh, between these those two years that the, the COVID and and then there is a real change. But uh, I would imagine that in, in most of the cases, if, if a company has conducted R&D, it will continue to conduct it on, on the next year. And similarly, it, if it has uh, kind of uh, commissioned R&D work, it, it will also commission, commission it on the, on the next year. So in, in the most cases, I would imagine that uh, more, the real answer should be here here in the middle. And we can see that in this own R&D case, uh, that there is a little uh, drop if the respondent changes, so the, uh, the, the next person may think otherwise whether, whether they have conducted R&D or not. Interestingly, though, uh, when we ask uh, about the, the, whether the company has commissioned R&D work, the, the, the uh, difference between these respond, uh, respondent groups is, is uh, smaller. There is less variation. So uh, um, I, I guess I need to go back to the data to, to check what might be the reason. Uh, one explanation could be that there is so much uh, less uh, responses to this question. Here you can see that the, the uh, uh, the population is in thousands because I have collected this over from starting from the year 2000 and, and here it can be hundreds on, 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 on some cases. But still, still interesting. Um, <clears throat> if we then compare uh, how do these companies answer to this same question on, on national survey and community innovation survey, uh, we can see that on own R and D uh, uh, question, the the 
uh, responses uh, rely quite quite well. So if the company has answered yes to the question, do you conduct R&D on, on community innovation survey, it has typically answered yes also on this national R&D survey and, and so goes on to uh, no and no combinations. But still there are some combinations where a company has, uh, for example, in 218 cases, it has answered no uh, at community innovation survey, but yes on national R&D surveys. Okay, but what, what is most striking uh, is this commissioned R&D. And here you can see uh, that actually when, when a company has answered no at the national survey, do you commission R&D? Uh, it has actually answered uh, almost equally often yes at, at a community innovation survey than, than no. So this is quite, quite strange. And uh, I guess I will, will check that. What, what, in what, is there some kind of, a, could there be some kind of, kind of a common reason behind uh, this, this kind of deviation? Do, do those companies belong to some industry, for example? Are they small firms or, or big firms or, or what could be the, the reason be, be behind that? But that's quite, quite uh, striking to, to my mind. Um, then, um, if we uh, get back to, uh, to this spending shared, okay, now I got again, connection is unstable. Um, here I have compared the answers how much a company has said it has spent on one year to its response on the spending on the next year. So is there a change? And of course, we, in most cases, we, we would uh, imagine that there, there aren't big changes. And, and indeed, uh, most of these, these responses kind of follow a normal, normal curve. Uh, most of the responses locate here in the in the middle, actually stating that there there is a small decline uh, on the on the amount, and still uh, you can see there 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 is a uh, gap between whether whether the uh, respondent has changed or 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 not. It, if it has remained the same, uh, then then a bigger number of, of those uh, responses locate here in the middle. Whereas in these most extreme cases where, where I guess in this case, uh, the previous response has been that we, we haven't spent anything. And then on the next year, they have stated some number. And so the, the uh, increase is in infinite. So. So uh, they, they then locate on, on here on the uh, right, right column. And uh, well, surprisingly or not, uh, in most of those cases, the, the respondent has changed also. So this, this, left, this left table is about uh, own R&D spending, uh, whereas this, this uh, right one is about uh, uh, commission, uh, kind of um, a bigger uh, kind of amount, the, the innovation activities in general. And we can see that whereas this in R&D spending case, the answers follow this normal curve, except this, this uh, other end. In this general innovation activity spending case, uh, the the the, the variate, variation on those those uh, changes in in res responses or how much the amount has changed uh, spreads a lot. Uh, very many uh, on very many uh, responses, there is either a shift from from 
nil or a very small amount to some, to some significant amount or vice versa from one uh, some significant amount to, to nil or a very small small amount. And again, you can see that if, if the respondent has changed, then that uh, kind of uh, those, those uh, uh, cases, uh, they populate the, these uh, ends on this, this continuum. So this, these results, they, uh, they relate to this uh, national R&D survey where, where we have, um, in many cases, we know who the, the respond, uh, respondent has, has been. Then if we, uh, this um, R&D spending is also uh, ans um, asked on commission innovation survey. And then if we compare these two uh, responses together, um, we can see that on this own R&D spending case, uh, the, the, again, we have this kind of a normal curve and, and most of the answers this blue column, they locate here uh, in the in the middle where where uh, the respondent response has been about the same on national R and D survey and, and commission innovation survey. So uh, respondents seem to have pretty pretty good uh, knowledge or understanding, or at least they they communicate the same figure on on both surveys. Sorry, can you hear me? Um, yes, uh, it's uh, sometimes it's a bit difficult, but if you speak slowly, it's okay. Okay, good. Yeah, sorry, sorry about this. I didn't know this trip when when uh, this time was booked. Um, <clears throat> whereas, if we the, the, um, there is the second. Uh, uh, measure about all innovation uh, expenditure, and there we can see that the these ratios they uh, deviate or or spread a much larger uh, continuum or spectrum. So again, this kind of shows that uh, this concept of uh, innovation uh, expenditure. Is, is is much more difficult for the, the respondent to comprehend than, than own R&D spending. So at least that is my, my conclusion from, uh, from, from uh, this figure. So this is, these are now own spendings, own R&D spending, own spending on, on innovation activities. If we then move to uh, purchased, commissioned uh, research and development, and, and now we take the third data source, these uh, taxation, financial statements data. This purple column uh, is the ratio between uh, the measure on national R&D survey and community innovation survey and, and uh, quite nicely uh, the, the, the uh, responses seem to uh, in, in most cases they are or at least on the 40 40 percent of cases they are about the same same figure although even in these numbers uh, there, there there are deviations so that on on community innovation survey, a smaller uh, figure has been given. But what is striking here is that uh, when we compare uh, the, the figure uh, people or respondents have given on, on uh, the surveys to the figure that they have given on their financial statement, uh, the, uh, the, the most of the in most of the cases uh, the figure is is very very different um, again i need to check this uh, situation in in greater care to see what kind of companies are there some kind of 
general reason what could explain uh, this, this phenomenon. Uh, but in uh, one kind of explanation can be just that in, in Finland, uh, the, there isn't any, any real tax benefits to report uh, that some, some cost is related to, to R&D. We don't have any tax benefits uh, based on research and development. So companies just may be a sloppy to, to report that, okay, this, this uh, uh, commissioned work related to R&D. So that can be the the reason, but but still, you can see that there is this big uh, big difference between the survey measures and then uh, financial accounts measures. If we then uh, get back to to the national R and D survey and and the fact, do the responses change if if the respondent changes, uh, we ask that, okay, what percentage of your research and development expenditure uh, go for basic research, what percentage goes to applied research, and, and what, per what is the percentage that goes for development work. And typically, uh, the, the, uh, this basic research and applied research on company cases, they get very small percentages and the uh, most of the uh, funding goes for, for development work. Uh, and we can see that uh, when we go from one year to a, to a next one, uh, the, the shares or percentages, they, they stay about the same. So there, there aren't uh, any, any big differences. But again, we can see that if the respondent changes, then the, the, the uh, ratio, how, how similar they are, that drops also. Uh, whereas these two, if the, the respondent uh, has remained the same or, or hasn't stated his or her name, uh, they, they are they're, they're, the responses are likely to stay stay about the same. Okay, um, relating to this nature of of uh, R and D work, whether it is basic one or applied or 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 developmental work, I. I kind of have a hypothesis that, okay, if, if a company spends a bigger share of uh, related to, to its turnover to R&D, so uh, if, if a company spends 20% uh, of its revenue to R&D, it would be more likely to do kind of basic and applied research than just developmental work. Whereas if, if a company spends one or two percent of its revenue to R&D, then probably it, it, it would just do kind of this kind of a development work. But that, <laughs> that is clearly not the case. Uh, you can see that these spots have spread all over this, uh, this table. And, and there is this, if you can see this line, uh, I guess this is uh, what Excel uh, draw kind of a recurrent line uh, based on these uh, uh, this input information. So it's it's almost totally uh, stable, no difference whatsoever whether you spend one percent or twenty percent uh, of your revenue to R and D, whether how much you you spend on on basic or applied research. So um, I wonder whether there is any theory that they uh, uh, would, would kind of take a stand on that, whether, whether that amount should change or not. But actually in this fin Finnish case, it clearly doesn't depend anything uh, at all on, on, on the type of R&D work done. But uh, another measure about this internal, oh, now it went too far about 
this internal survey there, uh, there is a question uh, is uh, whether the company uh, is develops it, it um, products and processes uh, itself together with somebody else uh, starting from a third party's innovation or uh, just then outsource that uh, R&D activity to, to other, other parties. And <clears throat> so I compared uh, that those answers uh, to the, to the uh, amount uh, companies has, uh, had stated on their financial accounts that how much uh, had they invest, invested in machinery on, on that year. And you can see that on, on those cases where the, the company had, had, had stated that, okay, we, we, uh, we develop products and processes and, and uh, clearly by ourselves or in close cooperation with, with some, some other party. In those cases, the average investment on, on machinery had been like 1.4 million euros. Whereas in, in those cases where, where the company had said that, uh, no, we, we don't uh, kind of develop these products or, or processes, but uh, um, kind of rely on what's, what's available on the market. There, the investments had been something over through uh, 300,000 euros per, per year. Uh, on those cases where there was no information, uh, no response to this uh, community innovation survey question, then the average spending was something like 700,000 uh, euros, so in the, in the middle. Okay, then we move to uh, R&D subsidies. Uh, in Finland, uh, now uh, as a researcher's perspective, uh, we have uh, in, in that sense an easy situation that most of the R&D subsidies are, are paid by one uh, governmental organization, namely Business Finland, uh, formerly known as, as TEGES. And so we can compare uh, whether the company has got uh, Business Finland funding on some year uh, to what they have, have uh, said on this national or answered on this national R&D survey or community innovation survey to the question, have you, have you got uh, uh, innovation funding? On this uh, R &D, national R&D survey cases, it seems that uh, if, if a company has got Business Finland funding, so this upper row, Actually, there are some cases where they have had said that no, we 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 haven't, even though they they had. Uh, whereas on the second case where they uh, hadn't got business Finland funding, they they really knew that no, no, we haven't haven't got. Uh, so that's that's quite clear. Although I must say that uh, uh, one reason behind this this deviation in responses is that uh, the, uh, the decision of the Business Finland funding uh, can, days, can take place on one year, and then the, the amount, the, the funding is paid on the next year. And, and so that might kind of explain why, why the respondent has said no, yes or no. Or it can also be the case that, uh, the, let's say that the funding has been applied in 2014. Uh, they got the positive answer on 2015, and the funding is for four years, so 15, 16, 17, and 18. 
And now if we take this R&D survey on 2018, I guess it, it, uh, uh, it can fairly well be that the, the respondent uh, answers, no, we, we haven't, haven't got any business Finland funding. Uh, if, if the, the person has already forgot that, okay, it was years ago when, when we got and actually the, the funding still, still runs. Uh, the same um, applies also for this community innovation uh, survey. So if we compare what they had answered there to the actual, actual funding, uh, even though the, the percentages can be, oh yeah, they, they look about the same, but <clears throat> yes. So um, again, this is an issue, I guess I need to, take a closer look, take this kind of um, time period in the, in the uh, account to see uh, if, if that could explain part of these, these answers. If we then compare uh, um, how do these responses uh, between um, the, the national survey and, and then um, with respect to business Finland funding, uh, how do these, these amounts compare? We can see that if the person has said that, yes, we, we uh, got funding from business Finland and it was this much, then these answers or the ratios of the answers, they follow this kind of a normal curve. The, the, uh, most common answer being here in the in the middle where they are able to state about the, the uh, right figure. Uh, but if we then take into account these kind of false answers, the respondent answers, no, we haven't got funding when we're, uh, actually they, they got funding. So we are here in this end of the, of the continuum or the opposite case that uh, they state that, uh, uh, no, we, we didn't get funding, or oh, what did I say? Anyway, the, the other, other end that <laughs> uh, they mistakenly say that uh, we don't get, they got, or, or they say that we, we didn't, uh, we, we uh, got, but they, they didn't. So, so if we take those two kind of false answers in the, in the case, then of course these, these percentages on those uh, uh, here in the middle uh, are much uh, smaller. Okay, that's about um, funding. Now we go to the to the uh, R and D personnel, and what can these uh, these uh, surveys? Sorry, uh, Mika. Uh, just uh, for sake of having all the time for discussion, could you speed up uh, slightly? Okay. Yes. Let me let me think. What is the? Maybe I just show some. Uh, perhaps this this is the most kind of important slide with with respect to to this uh, uh, salary. So let me explain this this to you because it can be uh, somewhat confusing. Uh, so on this uh, R and D survey. Uh, we national R&D survey, we ask that, okay, how much have you paid as salaries to, to your uh, R&D personnel? And also it, it is asked that, okay, how many persons do you employ uh, as researchers? And if we uh, divide that weight sum by the, the number of, uh, of researchers, the respondent, says we get this uh, blue columns. So the, the average salary <laughs> would be very, very low. Um, okay, I, I uh, took this uh, employee employer uh, statistics and then based on the educational background, uh, degree and work title, Defined that okay, this person on this company belongs to to this R and D capital is a researcher, and then if I 
divide the uh, sum, the respondent said that they pay as salaries by this number of employees uh, I estimated based on the job title and, and degree. Then uh, I get this green uh, column distribution. So this looks now pretty good. So here the, the most common uh, annual sal salary for, for a researcher is between 50 and 60,000 euros, which, which is quite reasonable, I believe. And now the third case. There, uh, I just checked from the uh, kind of taxation data that, okay, I have these persons I have de defined as researchers. I just checked that, okay, how much did they get paid? What, what was their salary? And then this taxation based average salaries for those persons, I personally defined as researchers, they follow this purple columns. So here, the average annual salary is, uh, is a little bit less between 40 to 50,000 euros. So um, I guess that's, that is quite, uh, quite interesting. On this, I hope you will, uh, at least it's okay for me that these slides will be, will be, will be shared. Uh, on this next slide, I then uh, because this, these figures are based on national r and survey, I again have this information about the respondent, whether it has remained the same, same or not. So this is just then uh, the previous slide uh, put on this view where we, where we know the, the respondent. And, and here the, the taxation column, uh, I just took the, the, the same companies that on the, on the survey belong to blue, blue column. So just calculate on the taxation values, the, the, the same, same change from one year to another. And then, uh, sorry, that was the, the kind of total amount paid as salaries per company. And then now here it is divided by the number of uh, researchers per company. So the average salary per, per person. Okay, that's about uh, employees and their, their, their salaries. Uh, with respect to, to patenting and, and uh, markets where those companies operate, that is asked on community innovation survey. In, in Finland, we have data on uh, value added taxation data. Where, where the companies must report that, okay, this much of the revenue comes from Finland and this much comes from EU countries. So we can compare uh, if, if the company has stated that, okay, we, uh, our markets are only in Finland, then yes, indeed, indeed for those companies, 97% of their revenue comes from Finland. Whereas if, if, a, if they state that, okay, it's uh, both Finland and European Union, then 30% of their revenue comes from uh, EU. So this, this looks nice. Uh, with respect to patenting, uh, here, here is the comparison between the answer to this community innovation survey and the actual knowledge about the patenting, but I guess here applies the same same as for this uh, research funding. Patent application can be written on one year, but, but then it's uh, applied on the next year and that can confuse the, the respondent. So uh, I guess I can conclude that uh, in, in many cases, the, the reliability between these innovation measures uh, is, is pretty good, uh, especially in the cases where the concept is clear, like own R&D spending. <laughs> so that is, uh, then it's easy to answer for the, for the respondent. But then when we, the concept is more confusing, like all innovation expenditure, so what does that mean? It, it can mean very different thing to, an, to a 
one person than to another one. And if the respondent changes between uh, these surveys, so the, the, the answers can deviate uh, quite much. But OK, I, I guess I stop here now. Thank you. Thank you so much for this uh, fascinating presentation. I must say, where you see that uh, using uh, this kind of data requires a lot of competence on uh, the, the detailed structure of data. I would like to give to Carter immediately the opportunity to advance this discussion. Carter, to you the word. Okay, thanks a lot. And thanks a lot for the presentation uh, and the invitation to, to talk about this. Uh, this is very interesting. I think as, as you started, I mean, it's, um, the comparison is interesting in a number of ways. First, on, on, on looking at this question of, of, you know, how does it matter who is actually filling out the survey and what kind of uh, um, implications does that have and what kind of influences does that have on, on the numbers that we're, we're looking at and, uh, yeah, considering it to be, be objective. Uh, and also this, this question in terms of, of differences in R&D and NCIS surveys where a lot of, um, it's very relevant because a lot of statistics are, 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 are based on one or the other or, or typically on a, on a variation, uh, kind of in some cases all alternating between the two. So it's, it's also interesting to look at that. Um, I also thought it was very interesting your comparison with some of the other uh, sources. Um, although um, I have some questions, I can come back to these in terms of, of are they fully comparable? Are there things that things that the questions there? I think it'd be good, kind of, in any case, interesting to to elaborate on on, on that. Um, um, so I just I, I go through a number of comments, kind of looking through some of your uh, slides. First, on the, the the sample is interesting. I think I've, um, I had a few questions in terms of uh, just a clarification in terms of I think you mentioned over time in terms of what exactly um, are you looking at in terms of, of changes? Is it always, I'm, I'm assuming that that the data is is kind of a census sample for the large companies and then a random sample for, for the others is, is, a, is, are you looking at changes from one year to another or are you looking at changes when the, from, for a company that comes up in one year and may not appear until, yeah. More than one year afterwards. Is it what is it? What exactly are you looking at when you look at the changes, or what what rules you're going by? Um, uh, would also be interesting to know about the there's a in terms of the respondents. Um, or is, is there a difference pattern between the ones that actually provide the the names of respondents compared to the others in terms of looking at the making some more sense of of, of what you're looking at as it, as it was generally. Still a large number, but still a minority that was that was giving the names. But it's very interesting to look at this question of when when the name of the respondent uh, changes. Also brings up the question: which is more accurate? I think you're you're finding that in some cases when the respondent changes, they maybe they're looking at everything with fresh eyes, whereas whereas where the respondent is is the same, they may simply be um, yeah looking at at what was what was reported the year before. Um, we look at uh, uh, should, should I answer now in the in the uh, directly or okay. whatever is fine with me. Um, Let's so, first uh, finish uh, Carter's okay. comments. Um, I think that uh, in terms of looking at the difference between R and D and CIS. Uh, surveys. I think it was it was definitely notable that 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 the share of 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 of, of instances when when the results were um, quite different. In particular, it was the case where yeah, where the IRD so the largest share was was where they did, where there was this mismatch was when the RD survey there's they're saying that no, there wasn't any RD, whereas in the CIS they're answering yes where you have like for example 14 percent. i think that's that's very notable that there's a uh such a large difference um and, and i think you you come in and, and out of yourself it's be interesting to look at 
how does this how does this uh, are there any patterns to to how this uh, this discrepancy is in terms of different forms of size for uh, company size or potentially certain industries um, you have a large time span as well um, are are is, is is it has this been changing over time um, are the two converging or it would be interesting to know is is are they is there any effects is the situation the same now as it was uh yeah 20 years ago you really have a long long uh, uh, uh sample here and also what does it mean for the overall expenditures uh it's interesting to show this in terms of firm but what is, what does it really mean in terms of um, expenditures the differences between the two um another thing i was surprised that oh, one question i had on a number of the figures the where you're showing different um the percent change in uh, in in differences uh, the category farthest to the left um is that a minus 100% it says less than minus 100% i'm thinking if you go from anything to zero that must be the lowest um so I just was what was was wondering. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it it must be equal to minus one one hundred. So okay. in, in okay. principle, then it's zero. So they're so they're no going from positive, and then the next year they're saying there's no. Yeah, uh, exactly. That makes sense. Okay, I was wondering how you how it could be if there was more than minus one hundred percent. That makes sense though. Um, I was surprised also that you had the innovation expenditures for the R and D survey, but. Uh, um it was interesting both uh, also that um that r&d seems to be the lower in in the cis um where there's both but you, you mentioned the innovation expenditures is broader it seems it's more difficult to measure but also the r&d seems to be kind of negatively biased in terms of the the cis but it is definitely interesting in, in questions of how are these two surveys uh, set up in terms of, of looking at, it could also be a question of, of the, the, the different people in the in companies are responding to the two, two surveys, but other questions is how are they set up? And if the fact that they're both asking for the same um, group of expenditures, uh, that's a little, little uh, yeah. Anyway, yeah, how they're set up is really interesting to try to get a bot the bottom of, of, of where these differences really are what is driving them or what are the kind of the factors behind them. Um, in terms of, uh, one question I had in terms of the, was it financial statements was, um, that's it, it, it's interesting to bring that, that into, to compare with these, uh, the, the, the data from the financial statements. I was just wondering if is again, to what extent do you think those are, comparable are they basically using the exact same um definition of purchased r d could there be any reason why they aren't reporting the full amount um i'm assuming are they reporting it because they're capitalizing it or something like that there's just a a question to to kind of elaborate on to what extent do you feel that you have a full comparability a partial comparability in terms of that um also the same on the uh, business Finland uh, data, which is again is also interesting in that you've got fairly a large share where you've got a mismatch between uh, yes and no in terms of of, of receipt of uh, of R and D uh, subsidies. Um, you mentioned you mentioned the time period that could that could that could have a a major factor. I was also thinking in terms of whether any any firm ID and business unit uh, differences it could be, but uh, but it's still very, very, very interesting that there's, a, that the, there's so many differences. Um, the comparison of, of, of research and the R&D intensity is interesting that you don't find anything. I was wondering if, if you would find a, a, some greater pattern if you looked at specific industries or whatnot. But I, in any case, I, it's, it's, it's interesting, but I would, was really questioning whether it really is kind of can say anything about reliability, but it's very interesting to look at whether there's a pattern 
um, <laughs> which it doesn't sound, it sound like you find, but I wonder if it would be if you were looking at specific industries. The same with the comparison of investment in machinery um, and whether they have process innovations. I would expect that to be something one would expect that in, in, to a greater degree in manufacturing, I would think, where I wasn't really sure if that connection really um, held to the same extent if you're looking at a service industries industry. Um, and a last uh, comment was also in terms of the, uh, the uh, salary data. Um, to what extent do you think you were able to, and I'm, I'm assuming for the survey that you would know whether it was, it looks like the, the results look more comparable when you're looking at full-time equivalents, the, the employee years, uh, but I'm guessing you can check with the, in terms of the, the precise specification in the, uh, in the questionnaires, but to what extent, um, again, do you feel like they, that you're really able to be measuring the same, comparing the same things in terms of, of of the different uh, specifications, so whether whether is R and D employees could in some cases uh, have yeah different occupational classifications that could be something in there if that could have anything to do with the the differences there, but still interesting to bring into the other uh, other uh, data sets. Um, yeah, I guess that was it. Uh, very interesting and, and and interesting to see these different. Uh, different patterns and to, to bring up really questions that have that come up every every once in a while in terms of, of, of you know what are the what are the reliability and what are the potential weaknesses in, in, in this type of data. But thanks a lot. Thank you, Carter. And I give back the word for to Mika. Uh, if you could try to be short uh, with your answer. So we 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 spare some time uh, for, for a general discussion. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Carter, for the for the comments. Yes, uh, uh, I, I really try to to um, or uh, I agree that I, I must take a greater care on on who has really answered both surveys, both R and D survey and community innovation survey, and do this analysis again. Uh, just on top and may fairly well be because of, of those uh, respondents who have answered, for example, this national R&D survey and are not included on the on the community innovation survey. So, so yes, and <clears throat> I guess the uh, same kind of missing data bias would be behind this uh, this phenomena between. Uh, uh, this comparison between R&D and community innovation survey uh, and uh, with respect to the financial data. So uh, I believe I will just check those companies that had, have indicated some number uh, on these financial accounts uh, with respect to R&D spending or commissioned R&D work, and then pick up just those companies and then compare them to the to the uh, what they have answered on on these uh, survey questions and see whether whether that uh, affects any um, any any kind of uh, so that the the responses could be closer closer together and. And, and yes, I can agree that uh, greater care could be taken with regard to, to industry size of the of the company, etc., to check whether these kind of patterns could could explain some some of the phenomena. So, I guess that that's my homework then for the <laughs> for the next months. Thank you. I would like to open the floor. I have a couple of comments on my side, but I will first give uh, the opportunity to the both the participants to ask questions if you want. And please open your camera if you have a question. Uh, yeah, fans. 
Uh, yes, uh, thank you for a very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I'm Franz Kaiser. I work at the Chaps University of Twente, Netherlands. Um, I have uh, I have two comments, questions. The first comment is uh, there was a difference in own research versus commissioned research. Uh, well, my idea would be that for the commissioned ones, you have some kind of inter external uh, records. You have to send out a bill or you get a bill. And for the own, it's more uh, uh, interwoven with your normal activities. So maybe that's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why there are so, uh, why the difference is there. Um, but uh, the main thing is that I was, well, I'm not shocked, but I mean, the differences between the national R&D uh, survey and uh, the uh, CIS uh, survey are quite large. I mean, what are the consequences of this in, for, in terms of policy and uh, policy and for, uh, of evidence-based uh, uh, policy? Is, uh, can you speculate a little bit, a little bit about what that means for for the the uh, the image that that for instance Finland has in these uh, in these uh, overview studies um, in Europe uh, is it underrepresented uh, the the R and D expenditure or R and D effort or is it overestimated? Yes, yes, I guess. Uh, 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 sorry, I, I think uh, Franz had two, two questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah that, there that was one remark and one question. Okay. So the remark was about the uh, uh, own versus uh, uh, commissioned research. So um, maybe it's because uh, uh, commissioned research is better documented than own research. Uh, that was a comment. And the question was about the impact of the difference. Yes. Um, I guess before really taking a stand on the, on the impact, um, I will do another round with this uh, R and D and, and community in a survey. Kind of see what kind of companies have answered what. So uh, now each com company has a kind of weight, they are equally R&D or do very little. And, and they just happened swift there, their answer between R&D survey and community innovation survey, then perhaps the situation is, is not that uh, difficult. Uh, so on the next round, I will take the, the amount the, the company has spent on R&D or its turnover or something like that, some kind of a weight uh, to, to uh, calculate their, their response and then see that, okay, uh, is the situation uh, still as uh, kind of difficult or, or, or uh, do those companies respond similarly who really matter like, let's say 100 biggest R&D spenders in Finland. Uh, so mm, do this kind of a checkup for the, for the results. I'm, I'm curious, I'm curious, is there a, a comparable analysis done in other countries so that you can see whether Finland is a very peculiar country or is it something that is across the board? Uh, when, when I started this, this exercise, I, I couldn't find uh, yeah. any. Perhaps there is now, I, I haven't checked lately. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question. Uh, I have a couple of comments in one question. So a couple of comments which are to taken home uh, I, I get from what you presented. Uh, one taken home is, of course, that triangulation is, uh, is central uh, and checking uh, reasonably consistency and some, some figures you showed seem to be better than authors, of course. Uh, another issue, and this comes to the last uh, point that discussed uh, also by Franz, uh, uh, of course, you, you would expect uh, uh, that uh, 
reliability or quality of data is better for the larger firms, the more R&D investing, uh, which is good. Uh, however, we have to be careful because as soon as you use the data for a statistical analysis, usually you transform the data for example, with log square roots, et cetera, exactly to remove this dependency. And then you end up with small observations, which might tend to be very unreliable dominating your sample. So whereas the totals might be more or less reliable because the, the big companies give you reasonable results, uh, when you use them for statistical inference, you might get more, uh, more problems. Mm -hmm. And my, <clears throat> my question is, I'm worried by the data you presented comparing expenditures and personnel. Because if I see this data, I, I, I say that there must be something wrong. It might be that uh, personnel is counted in headcounts and not in FTE, I don't know, but I would like you elaborate on this. And maybe before I give you the word back, uh, I see a comment by Hugo Hollanders. Could you maybe, Hugo, elaborate on your comment on information available? Yes, I can. Hello, good afternoon. Hello. Uh, hi, Mika, long time. Hello. Uh, that we didn't see. I was just replying because we have been working together with Eurostat and the statistical officers for more than 10 years on uh, the uh, designing and redesigning the questions uh, used in the, in the innovation survey. And in, the, in these meetings, we have been often been, been discussing these issues about the comparability between results between the R&D survey and the innovation survey. The issue does not occur for those uh, countries uh, where both surveys are being combined. And of course, results will be the same. But if you have separate surveys, it turns out that the particular large companies reply quite differently. Um, Larger companies see innovation the same as R&D. There's no innovation without R&D. So large firms are more inclined, for example, in the R&D survey to more properly uh, account for the R&D expenditure. In the innovation survey, of course, the, also the concept of, 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 of innovation is a bit, uh, say, uh, not as neatly defined. We know when we talk to people from statistical offices, when they talk to the, to the respondents in the companies, even if you give a definition up front, people will read the definition on the first page, turn the page, start answering the questions, and then work with their own definition. So it's really difficult to get people responding to the innovation survey to answer the questions using the same definition about what is a product innovation, what is a, a business process innovation. So I'm not surprised to see some uh, to see some differences. I also should point out that, for example, some questions in the innovation survey refer to activities in a three-year period. In the R&D survey, it will be a one-year period. That applies to some of the questions where you have been uh, comparing results, and that could also explain uh, some of the differences that you see. Um, I think. Very interesting would be uh, the comparability between the samples between the R&D and the innovation survey in Finland. I think you probably, I expect that, um, because in the CIS, um, all larger firms will be included in the survey, and it's the SMEs where they will, uh, which, um, uh, which will be sampled. Uh, so I would expect, I, I would be, uh, it would be of interest, for example, if you could split your results between as in the results for SMEs, a comparison between the R&D and, and the innovation survey and a separate analysis comparing large firms, because I would expect that differences sh should be less for larger firms. It would be nice to see if this would also come out of your, of your analysis. Then of course, you're in a very lucky position that you actually, actually have access to all of these um, detailed firm level data. There are not that many countries uh, where you could uh, could do this kind of uh, uh, an, an analysis. I think you could also probably do it uh, with uh, with the German data, maybe with Dutch data, but normally it requires uh, access to the to the to the micro level data at a statistical office. Or of course, if you work there, that also helps. <laughs> Thank you so much, and uh, I really must support uh, your uh, comments on definitions because we made the same experience collecting data from universities or from statistical authorities on universities. You can be try to be so precise as you want in providing definitions, 
but then people, even statisticians, read the label and interpret the label with their own categories. So there are so strong limits in the extent we can drive uh, respondents to match exactly what you intend for a concept, for a definition. And I think our community should be aware of these uh, uh, structural response uh, problems. Mika, back to you, to, if you want to add something or to reply. Yeah, I just want to thank Hugo about this this comment, and um, so uh, I definitely will do this separation to SMEs and, and large companies. And uh, also that reminded me also Carter's comment on, about this possible change over time. So as I said, I combined everything starting from year two thousand uh, together. So per perhaps there, there, there is differences whether the, the response has taken place at early, at the beginning of 2000, on those early years when perhaps these surveys were not that common and, and new to, new to, to people uh, compared to the current situation where, when these have taken place over, over a number of years. So that could be another other explanation and uh, need to be checked. Thank you. Are there additional comments or questions? Uh, if I might add, uh, maybe this kind of work is less fashionable. Uh, yes, sir, uh, Hugo? Uh, okay, what I was expecting, Mika, was a bit more information, for example, on which questions would be more reliable in the CIS and which questions would give less reliable results. Based on your comparisons, which you say that maybe some questions we as users should be more careful uh, in, uh, with the interpretation of the results. And could you also say, for example, that some questions are more uh, more robust if you compare them with the R&D and the other uh, information sources? Yes, that definitely uh, must be the, the uh, outcome of the this exercise. But I, I'm I'm afraid I cannot really answer it at the at the moment. Uh, more than this, what I'd say is that when the concept is clear then it's more reliable compared to situation when the concept is more vacuous, then, then the responses uh, are definitely more unreliable. But other, I, I, I dare not to <laughs> uh, take any, any stronger uh, stand on that at the moment. I, I was asking because we have had these discussions for many years about uh, the comparability of CIS results between countries and also within a country over time. And we know, for example, that the yes, no questions work much better than when you ask companies about expenditure. In particular, because R&D expenditures, for example, they are accounted for in the internal uh, accounting systems, but an, an innovation expenditure is really a bit of an estimate. And it really depends whom you ask. Is it a manager? Is it a CEO? Uh, depending on the res respondent, you will get uh, different answers. That probably also explains some of the, the, the differences that you observe between uh, mm -hmm. when you start comparing the, the different surveys. So, of course, it would be nice uh, if some of your results, for example, could help in maybe redefining uh, either the question or coming up with recommendations, for example, for the sampling or how to uh, uh, ask for the, uh, how to run uh, the survey to improve, for example, the, the reliability of the, of the expenditure data. Um, as you know, I also work on the uh, on the European Innovation Scoreboard, and one of the indicators that we have there is about non R and D innovation expenditures. And many countries criticize that indicator because they say it's uh, it's not precise. It gives um, unexpected low results for some countries, like the Netherlands. They have almost no uh, the, the innovation expenditures are almost completely made up of uh, of R and D expenditures. So there's almost no non R and D innovation expenditures. But we know particular after the with the implementation of the of the new Oslo manual, which started in the 2018 CIS, which integrated the marketing and organizational innovators into the uh, business process innovators, 
that we should be able to capture more uh, non-R&D innovation expenditures, as we now have more uh, innovative companies answering that question. Whereas before the CIS 2018, it were only companies that introduced a product and or process innovation. So that's why I was really like intrigued uh, um, with the potential outcomes of your work. But I also realized that it's still work in progress. I should Thank stop you. talking. Yes, and uh, uh, yeah, this is about marketing, for example. Uh, um, that is an issue I, I have also tried to capture based on this uh, um, kind of employee data, but it has proved to be difficult. We have currently another project going on in Finland where we try to uh, measure kind of creative industry and um, uh, creative activities, and that <laughs> that that is pretty difficult. Challenging also. Thank you, Mika. Can I ask you to comment on this uh, huge difference uh, between uh, uh, expenditures and uh, uh, personal data, which translates into the fact you find out that the expenditure per unit of personnel is very low? Uh, yes, I. I guess I need to go back to re to check what has been answered from uh, exactly on the questionnaire. So uh, was it asked the the head count? Was it asked uh, the the kind of annual uh, work years or or what was exactly answered? So. Uh, I need to check that first because that with your connection is now uh, and what 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 might be the uh, Sorry. Um, could you wait? Can you hear me now? Seems that the connection collapsed. Oh. Can you hear me? Yes, now, yes. It okay. So, uh, as an answer to that question, I will go back to data check if there is any pattern uh, behind uh, those cases that explain the deviation, whether it comes from some industry, uh, from uh, some um, because of the size of the respondent or, or anything, anything like that. Okay, thank you. If there are no other questions, I found we had a very interesting discussion. It may be less fashionable than discussing about theories or concepts or empirical results, but I, I strongly feel we need this layer of a very technical discussion exactly to avoid presenting results which are created by problems in the data collection and the definition, etc. So I, I, I want really to thank uh, uh, Mika for your contribution and your pioneering work. I want to thank Carter and the other participants. And can I ask Alessia to show you the slides with the next? Uh, the next research seminars will be 14th of December, same time. Uh, it will be on international scholarly mobility and migration worldwide. Uh, Ali Akbar Akbaritar, Akbaritabar, who is now in, uh, in, in Germany, in, in, in Rostock, uh, uh, with a very experienced discussant on international scholarly mobility with Chiara Franzoni from Polytechnic of Milan. So I welcome you uh, to attend the next seminar. And otherwise, I want to wish you a good afternoon. Thank you. And we can close the meeting now. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs>
Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you.